Hello there. Once again, this is Anton from Anton Bay, and I was just browsing around in my local used bookstore the other day. Um, it's not a chain or anything like that. It's just a, just a typical used bookstore in our mall, and there was a stack, stack, of Justice Machine comics and Comico stuff, and I'm like, well, I know I have a bunch of Justice Machines some, somewhere, but I wasn't sure what issues I had, and they were a buck a piece, so I kind of just grabbed the stack. I think I got 16 books here, um, and I'll just show you what I got. Um, this is uh, from the miniseries Justice Machine featuring the Elementals. I have not read a lot of Elementals. I mean a lot of Justice Machine. I've read quite a bit of Elementals. I really enjoy the book. Um, it's one of those that I would like a someday maybe to get a full run of. And I've got a lot of Justice Machine, but I'm not sure what. And it's a comic that me and my brother had found uh, really early on. It was in some, like, pack of comics that we bought for a dollar. And it was one of those sealed bags that had, like, three comics in it or five comics in it or something like that clear back in the early 90s and I remember there was an issue of Justice Machine in there there was an issue of Bade Biker and Orson uh, Nemesis the Warlock was in one of them uh, there was an issue of Den in one and I just remember that this was one of the one of the books that was in there so it was just one that you know it hey for a buck a piece I thought I would give him a chance um, I recognize this guy, his name is the Demon. So I, I do like Comico stuff. I don't like it as much as I like Eclipse. I think Eclipse is probably one of my favorites. Uh, or actually Malibu. Malibu is way up there on stuff I really, really like. But Justice Machine is a pretty decent looking book. And Comico stuff is odd. And wow, wow, that's a heck of an opening page. That is awesome looking. Who drew this? That's really good. Do we have any title page here? Looks like no, we don't. Oh, there we go. Uh, Rick Levins, guest penciler. Way to go, Rick Levins. That was a heck of an opening page. Johnny Quest, Rocketeer. So Comico made The Justice Machine, I know was one of their titles. Um, the Elementals was another title that they were well known for. Um, I think, I'm pretty sure they did Johnny Quest, was a Comico book. And what year is this? 1988. 175. That's not, that's not too bad. Um, it's not good. I mean, you're still looking at, you know, you're competing with 60 cent comics, dollar comics at the time. But I like how these are all color. I don't remember running into too many comical books that were black and white. I mean, I'm sure they have some. Just look at how 80s that picture is. That's awesome. The Jam. I forgot the Jam was Comico. See, I'm not terribly familiar with the jam, but I know he was in a book with Madman, and that's how he got on my radar. And I can't really remember much about him. I don't know that he has any powers. I just thought he was a funny character. This is the actual issue that me and my brother had. Just a machine. I, mean, I picked up quite a few issues, so I'm not going to probably flip through every single, single page, but you get a good idea of the art, the ads, elementals. Lisa has a boyfriend, or at least she thinks she does. I'm not positive of everyone's power set. I do know that that guy grows big. That's about the only thing I know for sure. Letters of the Law. That guy's got a nice collar. Okay, so this is one thing Comico did fairly regular. They give you these really cool wraparound covers. I always thought those were neat. A 
That's quite the outfit. I also noticed these things aren't just bursting with the seam with ads. You get some stuff for other... Okay, I've heard of the Fish Police. That's another Comico book. Um, I've never heard of Ginger Fox, though. That one is different. Rocketeer. Of course, we've heard of the Rocketeer. Although I haven't heard much of it published from Comico. So other than running ads for their own books, I'm not really seeing like crazy amounts of uh, ads for anything else, which I appreciate. Earth, uh, Jorwell years. For a second there, I thought it said Orwell years, but it's G. Orwell. More Ginger Fox. Hype. I'm not familiar with Hype. Another thing I could probably say about most comical books, um, if you're looking to buy them or check them out. Um, they're not very expensive, generally. I find these things r relatively cheap anywhere I see them. Uh, they are non-coded books, so they don't have any comic code authority stuff. So, I mean, they're probably, they're a little on the rougher side. Uh, not anything like adult themed, but they sometimes, you'll, you'll see the occasional swear word or touch more violent. Touch on some more serious topics that, that Marvel or DC wasn't touching at the time. <coughs> Just because they're non-coded. No comic code authority. That is a great robot. That is awesome. That is really great. Johnny Quest Special. Troll Lords. I've heard of Troll Lords. It's a comic code book. is on justice machine yeah all of these have if not wraparound covers uh just pretty cool art in the back which i always always thought was pretty neat i don't know tons about them but i do think it's well eye patch Looks like he passed away. That's sad. Cool looking dude. Gumby, it's time again. Gumby Winter Fun Special. That's interesting. And this guy under the hood has been a wolfman the whole time. I find it hard to believe they wouldn't have noticed that. Ah, the Maze Agency. Um, so I do have a few issues of the Maze Agency. Um, that's another good comico book. And what else? What else does Comico make? I'm trying to remember. They made quite a bit of stuff. I know they made some uh, mage, mage books, the older stuff. Before it was Image, it was through Comico. Uh, before it was the Hero Defined, it was the um, something else. The Hero... Ugh, I can't remember. Before he was Kevin Matchstick, he was uh, Kevin something else. Uh, basically a symbol of, of potential. That art looks, that animation, I think they're, that looks really off. The whole dimensions of the body. I know, I, I think it's meant to be like more of an aerial view, but it was not. This came out as a really awkward looking picture. Another great alien. Mage the Hero Discovered. That's what it was. Uh, Grendel. I don't remember Grendel being Comico, but you never know stuff. And one thing I have noticed with most Comico books with their coloring, um, and this is a little different from Marvel, just look at the coloring, just the way that they color stuff in, and also their backgrounds. There's a lot of pretty, pretty blah backgrounds. They don't really have anything in them. And they'll be bright, uniform, single colored panels without lots of shading and shadows. And 
you see that a lot, it seems, in Comico books. Like, all of these. Yellow background, white, orange. Uh, everything else is green, green. But a lot of times, nothing, you know? Just white. Which I don't think a lot... I don't notice in a lot of other comic companies. But Comico seem to do it a lot. And like I said, not a lot of shadowing. So, like... Almost no shadowing in this whole picture. Just a little... It's a little thing I noticed with their coloring that was a little bit, I don't know, once you see it, you'll you'll always pick up on it that it's like, huh, there's no shadowing in this at all. It's all just bright colors. I don't, I'm not mad at that. It's just a thing that you'll see. Less, less shadows and dark recesses and corners than you see in some books. George Earthwell, part seven of seven, actually. This one comes first. But I do, they do have some great opening pages. I mean, you gotta give them that. But at least you get a good idea of the art, a good idea of the story type of what you're dealing with. I mean, it's definitely superhero stuff. It's space stuff. Some of it kind of reminds me in just appearance. Um, I'm, I'm drawn to think of like, uh, Oh, what was that book? Nexus. Just a real similarity to Nexus and some of the bright colors and stuff. So, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> Sam and Max, Freelance Police. I'm not familiar with these characters, hardly at all, but I know I've seen them somewhere. Maybe they had a video game or a cartoon or something. But, not one that I ever watched. So it's hard for me to know. <clears throat> But as you can see, I got a nice pile of these. Like I said, they were very inexpensive. And yeah, it looks like I just have them stacked here out of sequence, but I don't think that's really gonna, gonna bother anything much. Yeah, some of these, these sci-fi pages are awesome. And the thing is, is I have been trying to, I, I paint sometimes in my spare time and started out just painting trees, but now I'm trying to paint some sci-fi scenes planets and stuff like that. And so some of this kind of art really does help to inspire me to do that. I mean, look at that. I can't paint a rocket ship to save my life, but you know, start looking at some space scenes. It kind of gives you some, gives you some ideas. Ladies agency. Yeah, now that I mention it, you can you start to really see it everywhere. This this lack of background, this lack of context of exactly where in the world this is taking place. It's sometimes a little obscure or a little just, you know, undefined. Anyway, Justice Machine. One book that I, I do pick up if I see it, and because I obviously have. Uh, E-Man is another comic by Comico. I think it's been published by some other places as well. I am less familiar with it than any, but I noticed I had a few issues, so I, when I saw that there was more there, I'm like, you know what, for a buck a, a piece, I'll grab some E-Man. They look, they look right up the vein of things that I think are interesting. Uh, comic book wise, they also are non-coded. I don't know what his power set or what his deal is, but it's a it's a book that, you know, I ended up just getting some, like I find them, and then, well, every now and then you just, I don't think I, I think this is the first time I ever intentionally bought some. And I know I have like a little stack of them, so I just went ahead and grabbed a few because they were there and there wasn't a lot of comics there. This place doesn't even specialize in comics. They just happened to be sitting there. And so I grabbed them. And they had a few image books and stuff there, but I am, am not interested in that. Was not interested in that. Um, I've, I've worked hard at weeding out. I, my last collection, uh, the inventory from the store I bought, I, I had, holy cow, 
15, 16 long boxes full of just random early 90s image. And some of it's great, some of it's interesting, and the rest is not. And it really starts to all blend together, especially visually. So it's just, it's a, it's a comic company I don't really hold much interest for anymore. Morningstar looks so creepy in that picture. Ooh, an E-Man shirt. I don't even know what E-Man stands for or what the deal is, but um, you can't you can't hate that cover. Look at that. That's awesome. Awesome all the way around. Anyway, that that is my little stack that I got. What is it? Uh, 16 books or so. But anyway, pretty good stuff. Uh, Comico is not as good as some companies, but um, you kind of get a gist of what you're looking at when you look at Comico superheroes and stuff like that. So if it's something you're interested in and you see them and they're cheap, you can give them a whirl. At least you know what you're getting into now. Anyway, that's my story. Thank you guys for watching. I will catch you guys later. Bye.